Scorpio, this is Tina with 85th House Vibrations, and this just in. It's where we get all up in other folks' business about love and relationships. This reading will be good for Scorpio Sun, Moon, and Rising. And if you would like to try to put together a more complete picture of what might be happening with you in the month of June, I would encourage you to watch your moon and or rising sign if you happen to know what that is. If you don't, you can go to a site like astro.com. You can key in your birth details. You'll need your accurate time first, and it will generate a chart for you. Um, without your time of birth, you can still get a chart generated. Uh-oh, this just popped out, Scorpio. Okay, let's see two of wands reverse. We'll go ahead and put that out. Um, uh, what was I about to say? Yeah, if you don't have your time of birth, and it has to be accurate, I want to make that clear. But if you don't have it at all, you can still generate a chart. But it it, it won't generate the houses for you. It won't break the the chart down into the twelve houses. And it, you won't get your rising sign. It will show you um, what signs your personal planets are in. Your outer planets too, but I mean, what's unique to you. It'll show you where your planets are. And it will also show you um, how the planets aspect one another in the chart. So that's still very useful information. However, the rising sign is very important. Uh, I know most of you, you guys watching already know that, so. But for, you know, for those who don't, because I sure remember when I was new to this. But I just kind of had a knowing, but, you know, some of it was still French to me. Okay, so, if I hadn't said already this is a general reading, it probably will not resonate with everybody. For those of you who have tuned in to past videos, um, you know, I usually use the Llewellyn Tarot, but I wanted to change it up. So, this month we are using uh, the Tarot of Dreams Day by Cyril Marchetti. And I am still using the Rider Waite deck for clarifiers, this is a different right away deck that I'll show you in just a moment. The one I usually use is a little pocket size, and, and this is another right away deck that I have, and it's got the little words on it. Okay. Page of coins in reverse showed up there, so uh, what is it, Scorpio? Are you not knowing which way to go to go? Get the money. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> Have the two of wands reversed. That's a Mars in Aries card. Mars is your traditional ruler, Scorpio. Aries is very extroverted, and, and Scorpio can be very introverted. Uh, and I'm bringing this up because, you know, like I, I just said, Mars rules Aries, up and, and, and Mars is your traditional ruler. Scorpio, I feel like you could be having some problems on whether or not to show your face, basically. Part of you wants to remain hidden and part of you wants to bust out there. And I think that you're having some difficulties deciding which way to go. Since we're talking about relationships, um, I'm wondering if you or somebody else may be a, f we're talking about you because I talked about Mars being your traditional ruler. 
So if this Two of Wands is about you and how you move, I'm wondering if for some of you, uh, you, you might want to let somebody know that you've been checking them out or you know you, you want to let them know what your intentions are but you're a Scorpio so you you know unless you know it's right unless you've already peeped out whether or not this person uh, whether or not you think that there's a potential for this person that you might be debating about to be loyal, true, honest, extremely dedicated, all of those things that Scorpio requires. You may be hanging back just because you're waiting to see how they move. And that's just something I'm picking up real quick. Uh, I also feel like there's some sort of waiting period. You see, something that somebody's waiting on. I pick up this energy that, yeah, somebody's waiting to make a, some sort of move, some sort of way. So let's see what else is up. Queen of Coins reversed. She showed up in my Virgo reading. And, you know, I love this card. Upright. She's beautiful. She's everything. It's exactly what it looks like. Reversed, though. Um, yeah, let's talk about her. Um, hmm, I just heard some, something that was very strange. Uh, Queen of Coins can be Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Reversed. Is there one or two things happening? This is somebody who could work very, very hard for something and never stop to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Or this is somebody who could be living beyond their means, um, you know, trying to be something that they're not. This is somebody who, you know, can be a little bit, she meddles a little bit when she's reversed. Now it's not always malicious. You know, sometimes she just is just doing too much like she's too nurturing. She's trying to help when you really don't want to help. You know, she does this to her kids and her family and you know, probably people that are close to her. Uh, in the reverse, she's like a helicopter mom. And it's too much. So, yeah, it's not all bad. But, you know, I, it just depends on what else is going on with the Queen of Coins. Uh, and for me, at least in this deck, uh, like I said, depending on the energies I picked up, I pick up in the surrounding cards, she really takes on two different people for me uh, when she's even, even when she's reversed. So, you know, I can't call it right now. I, I really don't know what category I want to put her in. But whatever's going on with her, she appears to be looking at this indecision, um, at this hesitance. Um, hmm. I, I, I feel like too that this person really this could be somebody who's going out of the, their way to give or provide something that they really don't even have, just in the hopes of, 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 um, of being able to pass through these doors. Mars and Aries makes moves for self. And in this case, the okay, the Queen of Coins knows that. But, you know, I feel like the Queen of Coins, in this case, 
um, maybe willing to, to, to break the bank in hopes of a, of, of a different outcome. Yeah. That's a weird message. We got the wheel card upright. Major Arcana, the wheel. Yeah, like I said, the Queen of Coins, I feel like whoever this is, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, it doesn't have to be. The sun sign, I often feel like if it's not the sun sign, it is on the rising or the moon, or this person has very heavy earth energies in their chart. But um, I feel like the Queen of Coins reversed. Um... Um, in some cases has, has, has been making some selfish moves. Like I said earlier, the Queen of Coins reverse um, really can go for me two extremes you know on, on the one hand working really hard and not uh, taking the time to enjoy herself or uh, you know pretending to be something that she's not living beyond her means uh, the queen of coins reversed is the type of chick that will have a sugar daddy and she makes moves in the light and in the dark. So the other thing that I'm seeing is that she's looking at this two of wands in that doorway, no matter that it's reversed. But this is a Mars and Aries energy. It's reversed, so shadow side up. We're talking about shadow side energy for right now. And she's moving in shadow. She moves in the light too, but in this case, she doesn't care that she has to move around in the dark. And just like in uh, the Virgo reading, like success and movement forward is on her tail. I don't know who this queen of coins is but she is big pimping. I used to, I said Aries was big pimping too, and this is a Mars and Aries uh, car. Uh, I'm just saying this Queen of Coins has come up reversed in, in that Virgo reading, and then this reading, uh, in the Virgo reading, she came up, the, the wheel came up in that reading too, and she had the world twice, all on her side making shady moves so scorpio you know maybe you and the virgo need to get together and talk and find out what's really going on if you all are dealing with this queen of coins who we'll find out what's up because i don't know the thing i always say too when i see the two of wands is about the law of attraction what you put out, you get back. And that was the theme in the Virgo reading as well. Uh, and it was a card that came up in particular that said what goes around comes around. And while this is upright, this wheel is spinning. And it's moving. But you know what? The one thing that people don't understand is that the wheel, even in the upright position, is not always moving towards success. This is just like, this is kind of like, a, it's mechanical. You know, it's, it's just like being on the machine, moving towards something, but not really sure what. You're just going through the motions. The wheel sometimes can be just about going through the, mo through the motions. You get what you need, but did you enjoy the journey? Uh, no, because you didn't understand the journey. Are you just 
on autobot going on the same journey that everybody else has been on because somebody told you that it was the journey that you had to go on. So while the wheel in the upright position is moving forward, you know, um, you know, again, did, did you get to enjoy the journey while you were moving towards getting whatever it is that you wanted, towards making these types of, uh, while you were moving in and out, did you enjoy the journey or was it a shady journey? A lot of times when you, I can't speak for everybody, but a lot of times when you get something that you know is undeserved or, or that you uh, didn't go about getting the right way, you didn't work hard enough for it, you don't appreciate it. And like I said in the Virgo video, some of the uh, some of the most vicious people tend to have tons of success, but it's because they don't care how they move. You know, for those of us who have talents and skills and things to offer and blah blah blah. Uh, who should be just as successful, you know, as, as anybody else who is uh, highly successful. But some of us don't make shady moves. We, we don't want to step on toes. We don't want to knock people down so that we can get up. We don't want to shove people out of the way so that we can move forward because at the end of the day, we have to live with that. But some of us would rather be broke Uh, doing the right thing rather than having to live with uh, the guilt or regret or betrayal or whatever it is. Even though we got what we wanted, we, we know we didn't go about it the right way. A lot of us don't want to do that. So a lot of us don't end up having the things or the success or the, the money or the fame or the exposure that some of the vicious people that fight dirty do. Uh, like I said before, uh, and not in this video, but it was, I think the, the saying was good guys finish last. I think I messed it up in the other video and said good guys never win, but same thing. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm picking up the feeling that this queen of coins reversed. is uh, going to win despite making shady moves. So Scorpio, you know, this could be some somebody that you're dealing with, somebody who's coming to your space. You know, or, or the core cards can be stages of development or energies that we project. Let's pull the clarifier and see if we can get some answers. Oh, Ten of Swords, it is just too much. It's too much. And, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Let's see what's going on here. The Ten of Swords, um, according to the Rider Waite deck, bottoming out, trouble is on the way. Thinking like a victim or a uh, martyr will keep your life in a downward, in a downward spiral. Plans and projects are in jeopardy. Your home life may be disrupted, and any area of your life is open to conflict. No matter how powerful and safe you are, trouble will find you. Huh. Okay. I know I read that like I've never gone to school a day in my life. I don't want to bore you guys by reading it again, but, um, man, somebody's being, somebody's being taken down for somebody else to get what they want. It, it, it's going to get to be too much. If somebody's making shady moves,
you know, it, 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 it damn near feels like death. Look at this card. The good news, though, is it's the 10. You cannot kill what is already dead. And Scorpio, if this is you who is um, dealing with the Queen of Coins, if the Queen of Coins is doing this to you, like I said, you can't kill what's already dead. But the thing about Scorpio, here's where Scorpio is different. Scorpio is about death and regeneration. So go ahead and kill me. So I'm coming right on back. I'm regenerating. You know, and maybe while in the beginning, this queen of coins thinks that, you know, they just got everything that they came for. And they took you down or somebody else down for it. Scorpio, this is you that the queen of coins has taken down. Um. Once you regenerate, because this is about, it's a 10. It's endings and new beginnings. One plus zero is one. That's about starting over. It's also, you know, about uh, individuality. You know, so I see it as striking out on your own. For some of you. So never fear, you know, it may not be comfortable, but Scorpio, you can handle that. I mean, come on, you go down to the trenches. Your modern ruler is Pluto. You rule the eighth house. And how many people, how many, how many people you know that deal with eighth house energies well? You do. That's why that's your spot. You know, so never fear, Scorpion, dear. You may feel stabbed in the back. You may feel like somebody has just taken you all the way out. Oh, but you regenerate and you transform. And then this wheel is for you. And what I feel like, because this wheel is ruled by Jupiter, this has already been going on. Scorpio, this may have already happened. And, you know, either she's trying to get away with doing something or you're trying to strike out on your own. But, um, I feel like that the worst of it has already happened and the reason I say that is because this card is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter goes direct on the 9th of this month today is the uh, the 4th so in 5 days Jupiter goes direct it's going to start moving forward and Scorpio that happens in That happens, oh my goodness. For some of you Scorpios, it's happening maybe in the 11th house. It really just depends on where your house comes to fall. But Libra rules the 12th house for Scorpio. That's on the 12th house cusp. I don't know where Jupiter is exactly in your chart, but Libra rules the 12th house. So. For Scorpios, Jupiter's in the 12th house. So any shady moves, that's that's why all these uh, arrows are here. Because all these shady moves or whatever was going on in the dark or whoever was trying to get over. It's 12th house stuff. It's hidden. It's self-undoing. You know, stuff that, that, you know, we don't know about. But something happens, and, and you definitely know about it. Because that's why you've got all of these ten swords here, and it's over now. 
Oh yeah, it's over now. So, bye bye, Queen of Swords. That's not your wheel, Scorpio. That's your wheel. You move forward, and you are going to remember every part of the journey. It, it, there's nothing about you that's superficial. So your journeys, whether you enjoy them or not, Scorpio, your journeys always mean something in your life. Yeah, it's never superficial for you. So not only are you going to uh, come from up under this, you're going to snatch the wheel, and then you're going to move on forward. And while, like I said, it may not have been comfortable, every piece of your journey is going to have special meaning for you. It's going to make you appreciate and do everything that you can with the new start that is coming to you. It feels like too much right now, but it's over now. You got, you know, technically five more days. Okay. And that's the way that I see it, Scorpio. If anybody would like to have a personal reading with me, you can contact me at Tina at 85th House Vibrations.net. I'd love it if you followed me on Facebook and or Twitter. That's 855. E-I-G-H-T, the number 5, V-I-B-E. Thanks to all that are watching. If you're new, thanks so much for clicking on this video and giving it a chance. And for those of you who are returning, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks again, and I hope to talk to you next time.